that starter job for that young person between the 15 and 18 category is a starter job. You know, I, I am the largest employer of any of us up here on this stage, and I have watched young people for the last 25 years go through our drugstore and start and go on and come back as managers. I'm so proud of what we've been able to do to give those young people that start that got them to college and to university. And to talk about a beginning job is not a great job doesn't make sense, and it is unfair. A job is a job, and when you're 16 years old trying to get to college, if you can make $150 a week and put it away, that's a good start to paying your first year at college. And every year you can work from the age of 16 till you finish high school, get you that much farther down the line to getting through college and university without debt because you can't start your life paying debt, paying for a car, and paying for a room. And I'm insulted that they say that a beginning job is not a job, and that is wrong. I have passion for the people of the workforce. I've watched young people grow up and come back as managers and be paid very well within the corporation that Kathy and I have. What they're talking about tonight is just wrong. A job is a job, and when you have nothing, a job is still a job. Thank you. Move on. Well, Mr. Henry refers to construction, and he's right in my wheelhouse. I work in the construction field. I've worked in it my whole life. And one thing that I have to speak about is, is that as a youth, you have to have an opportunity to uh, learn the profession. Um, they've, they've put roadblocks in our way for us to bring young people forward nowadays. Uh, the government is worried about uh, health and safety and welfare of people that aren't trained. When I grew up, my father took me to work as a regular part of my life. So I grew up and learned the common sense rules of working in the industry and grew up and learned the industry through that. Youth aren't getting that same opportunity, they're not nurtured the same way. And that's disappointing to me because we, we don't learn the pitfalls because we're prevented uh, from having those opportunities. Going forward, Oshawa has great assets that can be utilized to build a better future, bring in new uh, commerce, bring in new business. Our airport is an asset that can be utilized to develop businesses as a center. It's a unique opportunity for Oshawa. Going forward, that can, that in the university, we can utilize our youth in the university, bring them into businesses, and get them the opportunity to do internships, apprenticeships, and that, learn the skills that they can use in real world applications. Use that enthusiasm to develop a future that's honed here in Oshawa, and they can take it worldwide, wherever they want, but they can also share it here at home. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Yeah, I think I made the point. There's nothing wrong with McJobs to pay your way through university or, or whatever. My question is, what happens after that? Because we're not attracting any industrial jobs to Oshawa. And why aren't we attracting these jobs? Because we have the highest industrial commercial tax rate uh, in the GTA. And, you know, I, I have a plan that we, we should have a, a high-tech industrial park right next to the university. But, you know, to the, to the uh, west of the university, well, why would somebody locate there? Because if they were going to locate a $25 million plant there, they might move a half mile over the Whitby border and save themselves $375,000 a year in taxes. Or, by gosh, they might move to Markham and save themselves $880,000 a year in taxes for that same building. So we have to look after somehow attracting industry by having a very, very competitive tax rate that we don't have now. As for the jobs, the construction jobs, you know, these, these are jobs for a while, but they're not permanent jobs. I, my real concern is what happens to our youth after they graduate from UOIT or something with make jobs, why do they have to leave that town then to, to get a decent job somewhere else? Thank I you, want Bill. the job here. Hey, I, just, I just wanted to make sure people understand part-time jobs are important, but that this the question was about youth itself. If you're trying to at least get groceries for yourself and have some sort of accommodation, part-time, low-wage doesn't make it. 
That's the problem that we're facing in our society today. It's not the middle class kids who can be you know, driven to work and picked up and you get to save all, you don't have to pay room and board. My first part-time job was $1.80 an hour. You know, that, that's, it was way back in 1975, actually. But you know, nowadays, if, if you are a, you know, an at-risk youth or you are essentially homeless, you're not going to get very far on that part-time, low-wage job. Thank you, Rosemary McConkie. I agree. I think the topic is about a specific uh, group that are feeling uh, disenfranchised, di isolated, and um, in terms of what to give them, they have to have a sense of purpose. That's what you get up out of bed in the morning for. Everyone needs that. Uh, we talk about hope and trying, but with hope we need the inspiration. We need the people like Clarence here. We've got people in this audience that have inspired me. Um, youth who've joined my team. Uh, people who've walked into my headquarters who have been homeless. I, I think some of you may have seen uh, what uh, the video of Daniel Cullen is here tonight. People like this we need to have uh, among us. And each of us can inspire someone. I think this is where it starts, at the grassroots. We've got, uh, of course, the city is invested in Core 21 and entrepreneurship. And actually, that's the area where the growth really enhances a community. It's vitality when you've got a lot of small businesses. Entrepreneur, social entrepreneurism is, is uh, actually commented on in, in today's paper. It's a, a, a thing that we should be focusing on, as well as the points raised by uh, Mr. Longworth here. Uh, yes, we need to have uh, those lands up by the university opened up. And unfortunately, I agree. And may go to Whitby because the taxes there are lower. Thank you, thank you John Henry. Uh, thank you. Um, if you're wondering what that new building is on Farewell Avenue, that's the new steel plant for Triad Steel. 165,000 square foot steel fabrication plant currently, currently under this construction where they drew the building permit a couple weeks ago for $12 million. And when you look at companies like Optech that has moved to the airport, who is the world's leader in 3D colored digital mapping, and they install, install their technology on airplanes, uh, and they go around the world. Where you can talk about Del Monte, who's moved to Oshawa and converted a, a, a car parts building to the newest food processing plant in Canada that can service Ontario, Quebec, better from Oshawa than anywhere else. It's about the Spark Center at Core 21 that are taking those young entrepreneurs and developing all the new businesses that are out there. This is an exciting place. It's about all the positive things that are going on in this community. If you look in the north end of the city, if you want to look at jobs, look at just the houses that are being built, or the new hotel, or the new hotel downtown, or better yet, when you go to the corner of Adelaide, the new 15-story Living Lease Seniors Condominium Complex is being built, because this is the right place. We are creating opportunities and jobs for all parts of the marketplace. And hopefully those students that come to town from around North America to go to school at either UOIT, Trent, or Queens, or the University of Windsor in one of their locations here, will stay and help build that community we all know that Oshawa can become and is becoming. Chris Temple. Lou Devano was correct when he said that construction companies are hesitant to hire young people. Part of my job involves workers' compensation for injured workers, and the premiums that construction companies pay are extremely high, and when a worker is injured, those premiums skyrocket. And it was right when he talked about accident prevention and training. These companies also are, are sorry, these, these uh, jobs are union jobs, and you have to be a member of a union, which is a good thing, but the fact is, these companies are reluctant to hire young people, and we need to find some other way to help them. Okay, very quickly, uh, Bill Longworth, I'm giving you 30 seconds. Yeah, I'm going back to the mandate of this organization. You know, I, I perceive that the reality that everybody has is what goes on in their head. And there's a real need for counseling. There were days when I was growing up in the children's aid and not seeing my parents for a number of years, when I could have woken up and felt very, very bleak, there is no tomorrow. But you know, you have to develop a sense of optimism that tomorrow is always better. And determine that it is going to be better and work towards that better day. Thank you, Bill. <clears throat> Rosemary, last word. Well, uh, Mr. Henry was talking about the boom times here, which I, I'm sorry uh, doesn't seem to be actually reflecting um, the point we're talking about. 
the young people who are visiting this res refuge out of need. Um, and I think there's a disconnect between the jobs you're describing, the Del Monte, the growth in the north, with this part of Oshawa where we have youth in need. And there's got to be that connection. You mentioned Core 21. I mean, facility that the city has contributed money towards, entrepreneurism, they should be actually reaching out and helping people like Clarence here. That's, I think, part of the solution, using those connections that aren't there. We've got to re reconnect and get citizen participation. Thank you. Know, you. Being it. Thank I you. have a sense we could continue to talk about this.